YouTube. This is Chris with Space Engineers. Now, the designers have actually made a pledge, and this is a, a little while ago, to produce new content and release it on, you know, every Thursday. And some of the content additions are kind of small in scope, but they do add a lot of depth and complexity to the game. Uh, it's been a while since I posted. Uh, I've been running a industrial division in my corporation and EVE Online, and that takes a lot of my time, but uh, I've also been rather busy in real life. So I haven't had a whole lot of time to mess around with Space Engineers. Uh, if you've seen some of my videos uh, on the basics, I, I did a survival mode and just kind of went through the basics of, of how to survive and how to build things and, and stuff like that, which, you know, gets a, got a lot of views, and uh, that's cool. So I'm glad it helped out some people. Um, one of the updates that they did a while ago was add more um, parts to the conveyor system. And what this did was just open up a whole new opportunity for both small ships, large ships, and end stations, actually. And uh, in this video, I just kind of take a look at what my thoughts are on it and how I do things. And I don't know if it's good or bad, but it, it seems to work for me and it makes it a little bit easier. So one of the things that I did was I just went into creative mode. Uh, actually, it was the Lone Survivor map. It's got that uh, one platform with, with a station and... Um, you know, it's got the, the refinery and the assembler and, and stuff like that. So I, I did that, and then I just kind of built a few things onto it and put in the conveyor system. And I'll just take you step by step through uh, what what it really does and what it takes, and then you can kind of see how, how it'll work, and maybe you can use it to apply to your station or your ship to, you know, better and more efficiently use materials and stuff like that. So then you can take it over to the survival mode, and save yourself a lot of headaches of running around and, and stuff like that. So what I'll do is I will get into that and I'll just show you my conveyor system and I'll just talk about it a little bit. Okay, so what I decided to do to just show everyone how this conveyor system worked was to gather some uh, or whatever it is, rock. I, I think it's just rock here, but uh, it's really not important. So the uh, mining drills are an afterthought. I was actually just testing out this chassis with the extended uh, azipods or uh, nacelles, whatever you want to call them. I think azipods turn, so these are just uh, nacelles. And so I just threw on some um, mining drills and then I'm just going to use the conveyor system on this ship. Now if you look across the top you'll see a bunch of connecting uh, t tubes and those are actually the conveyor tubes. And in some instances, like on the outs, outriggers, on the uh, the tubes the furthest away on the outsides of these um, this frame, they're just uh, like a 90 degree turn. And then as you go back, um, you'll see that it actually runs into like a box. Now that's the conveyor box, and that gives you uh, six different directions, so you can connect up in six six different directions. Um, so this will allow you to kind of use them as uh, just it's just an easy way to get all the connections in one line simply uh, so those are kind of important and originally they didn't have any of these tubes or angles and actually they had the tubes before they had the angles or the 90 degree angles so uh, we originally just had the, the con conveyor boxes but they didn't really have any functionality until recently and um, also on this, if you look on the back of the ship in that um, flatbed area, there's three containers, and those, as long as you connect the um, the ports to each other, they'll they'll act as a cross through. Uh, you can turn off the conveyor system on those, but there's really no need to, and especially in this instance, it, it would uh, cause this not to work. On the back side of this, uh, we'll see that there's actually like a uh, an outlet tube, and that's called a I think it's called an extra extruder or an extractor. Um, basically, what it is is something you can turn on and off, like a valve, and then you can um, use that to dump out of that valve. So anything in the cargo, these containers will actually shoot out until it's empty, unless you turn off the the uh, extruder or extractor or whatever you want to call it. So we'll just um, get gather this ore, and then we'll get to where we need to be. All right.
right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly over this platform here. And in this platform, I have uh, put four collectors. Now, what these do is they collect anything that falls into them. Uh, you could put this at the bottom of a, uh, like a, a valley, and when you mine rocks and maybe use gravity, it'll actually pull these into the, into the collector here. But this one is actually set up so that you can dump from your mining ship, and what it does is it'll connect all the way back, and we're moving back to the refinery now. You see I have the refinery and the uh, assembler work together, but on the back side of this assembler, I actually put a, a collector tube. And this collector goes all the way under the station, as you can see here, all the way over. And there's a turn there. Then we come back down. And what I have here is actually a container on the top. And I'll sh kind of explain that after. But um, then we also keep going, keep going. And right here we split off to that platform, and then here we kind of go out. There's two more containers uh, on these two sides of the pad, and I'll explain why I did that. But we'll go back up here and run into the edge. So what, what I'm doing is I'm actually dropping uh, the rock that I just mined into this collector. And what I'm, I'm just going to put a reactor here real quick. So I put the reactor down, and I'm actually going to connect this reactor up to the system. So here I am just placing the uh, tubes here, and I'll connect down to the system below. And this actually is an offshoot of the collectors on the pad, and that's how I'm going to connect back into this, um, this network. So just add those tubes in, and we'll put one 90-degree turn there. And as you can see, all the lights turned yellow. That means that there is a connection between one endpoint and another. Doesn't necessarily mean it's connected back to um, to what you want it, but it is connected into a system between two endpoints. Uh, and as you can see, I can move stuff around. Uh, all these boxes are blue, uh, and, and they're not grayed out, so I can actually move stuff into them if the if that destination can actually handle that um, whatever I'm trying to put in there. So. We're going to go ahead and we're going to turn on the, the expelling apparatus here. And once I do the right thing here, so we'll go there and now we'll turn everything on. So as you can see, there's a, a poof, but that's actually rock falling out and it's falling into the collecting apparatus. So we will take a look at that happening. And then I'm going to go ahead and just click on the inventory here. And if we go down to the refinery, you can actually see that it is actually refining the stone and actually putting the gravel into the assembler. So let's go back over here and we'll just see, make sure that yes, it is working correctly, even though it says it is. And you can see that that material is going from that collector all the way down through the system and into the refiner. So now we'll just run over to this uh, container here. And as you can see, there's nothing in the container. However, I can move the material to the container. And what this actually gives you the ability to do is you can bury your refinery and your assembler, you know, maybe in inside an asteroid or deep inside a base to keep it away from uh, you know, if, you, if you're playing with asteroids or if you're playing with, um, you know, people crashing their ships into your refiner. Because uh, if early in the survival stage, if you lose your refinery or your assembler, you're going to have a little bit of a problem because you need those to refine the materials that you're mining. And also, one of the most important things is you're going to need it for uranium. Now, I disconnected this here, and you can see that this whole section went red. Now, anything within this network can be moved around, but you can't go back to the refiner because that was the only pathway there. Um, but you can transfer to different containers on that network, which... It's kind of what you did. I did right there. Now, 
the, the benefit of this is you can be anywhere and put one of those containers, and as long as it's connected to the network, you'll be able to access materials that are maybe stored deep in your base. And that way, you don't have to run back and forth to the assembler or to the refinery to, to get what you need to build stuff. So you could put one of those containers on like the ship pad that you're building things on, building ships or, or whatever, and you won't have to keep running back once you run out of materials. Now, uh, you can also set it up that you can connect, um, you can connect it up so that you can easily transfer materials to maybe your welding ships and or you could dump off materials from your grinding ships uh, and not have to go all the way back to the heart of your base. And that's pretty much what I wanted to discuss. And maybe you can use that to your benefit. Anyway, thanks and fly safe-ish.